and welcome to the Linux Lads. As usual, I am Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm sorry, but I sound like crap because I was talking way too much in all those meetings today and uh, I just, I have a sore throat. But it's not COVID, fear not. I'm otherwise healthy and I'm Mike. Yeah, but your name, oh, fuck's sake. your name is Mike. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, that that's the one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's all you have to say. Um, so, as usual, uh, we're back every two weeks. Um, didn't plan that transition super well. Uh, <laughs> but generally, um, so yeah, this week, uh, we, our discussion topic is, um, the barriers to entry and the empowerment of users in Linux and in general, I suppose it's just an inter interesting topic, um, because computers empower people to do great things. <laughs> so yeah, it ties in nicely with Linux and stuff, but first I am disappearing into a plit. A Black pit of despair in YouTube. <laughs> that's how I put it. Um, yeah, like, uh, so that's actually a, a very underhanded way of describing the new YouTube channel that I have. No, it's not new, actually. It's several years old. I actually have videos on it from before. But um, yeah, I made a new video and it'll be linked in the show notes. So I just wanted to use my platform to hawk my video. I, I thought when you're disappearing into a black pit of of despair, you're referring to mind test. <laughs> um, I thought he was watching the debates then, but anyway, that too actually that did that contributed. I was I was no I watched um, your video and I was pleasantly surprised how well um, mind test has come on. It mm. effectively is just like Minecraft. Yeah, for for those sorry if I didn't explain that well for the listeners, but. Basically, I did a let's play of Mind Test instead of Minecraft, and uh, yeah, as Connor said, pleasantly surprised by how good it is and how similar it is to the original. Um, yeah, so uh, watch my next video; it's going to be out later in the week. Boom! Hit that like button. <laughs> let's play of LibreOffice Calc. Let's play LibreOffice Calc. <laughs> I, I I think I have to do that now. It's almost as good as. <laughs> <laughs> or in in Mike's case, let, uh, let's play Visi Data. <laughs> yes, that that would be funny. That's always. Oh, let's play Vim. We should. We should. We I should, am convinced. Actually, I am convinced there is an audience for that. That's actually a game. There's a championship in Vim. Oh no, not sure if championship, but there's a thing called Vim Golf. Like you know, in Vim you can do many things in many different ways. So the so they give you a task and you are to achieve it in the smallest possible amount of commands. So yeah, it's 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 amazing. Apparently, I've never tried playing it because I'm just not that's, that good. But that's like something I heard of in college in my C class, where the lecturer told me that there was an obfuscation contest, basically where you had to get uh, the most efficient and functional C program into one line of code, or some something like that. Anyway, I might be getting it wrong. But, yeah, I, th um, I, th I think I've heard of it too. That, that must be fun to debug. Single letter variables are essential. Um, so <laughs> I just found that fascinating. Like, I really want to see some of the entries to that contest. Uh, Connor, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I have been out in the wild wilderness of COVID-19 world, i.e. the outside. And, <laughs> and uh, without giving too much away, I'm visiting a, a customer site of my um, company, um, essentially been booked there for two weeks to be helping out with the guys and things like that and I'm not really enjoying it uh, not because of getting out and about which I'm I'm actually um, isn't too bad I don't really mind it don't mind getting out of the house fresh air getting that merest mysterious thing that is mysterious strange concept to Irish people which is called vitamin D um, <laughs> you so mean fresh fresh Dublin air <laughs> well, re relatively fresh as, as opposed to inside the house um, yeah it's it's not the the, the best place to be in um, they're understaffed and uh, uh, it's just constant uh work and tickets coming in and everything like that and you might be thinking well isn't that part of your job yeah but it seemed to be a never-ending wave of of getting through so 
yeah, it's not enjoyable. Um, part of the reward of getting through something is is the breather at the end of saying, or the sense of accomplishment, accomplishment, oh, there was X amount of tickets in the queue and I got through all of them. But yeah, well, it's a never-ending um, tidal wave of, of stuff coming through. Um, that's not enjoyable. Uh, yeah, in my personal opinion, they probably should be uh, have two people in there doing what they they want to pay one person to do, which the regular guy seems to get through it enough, um, uh, well enough, but he's on holidays at the moment, so I'm covering him, but I do not envy him his job. That's that's the thing, like everything's going remote, everything's like, well not everything obviously, but like there's a hell of a lot more remote stuff, so IT and IT support, like frontline office IT support is getting so busy, I would say, like <clears throat> they've had to make all, make all sorts of adaptations and stuff to, to, to cope, so yeah, it's pretty crazy, um, interesting times we live in, as they say um yeah uh it's only two weeks so hopefully next week i won't be booked there and i'll be back working from home so it'll be a welcome relief to be working at home yeah that's crazy like it's it's the parallels with all this like covid stuff is crazy because i hear of so many people who are working in offices and that's perfectly normal for them for the last three or four months but uh i'm not gonna say what company i work for for like because i could be like breaking an nda or some shit i don't know but <laughs> but basically like we're there's no hint of us going back to the office it's not on the table at all um and yeah i think that's the right attitude for a lot of companies and i think a lot of companies are unfairly imposing people imposing upon people to come to the office when it's really not that necessary when they worked ho from home for two to three months at least during the actual lockdown earlier in the year um and i don't know i just find that unfair because we're showing that remote work works so yeah but that's getting a little bit political but we'll see um Moving on to some Linux E news, uh, Mike, um, Pura Sim, <laughs> they're calling it Awesim, which is even worse, I think. But I think Pura Sim actually works a little bit better, and I think you agree. Yeah, I do. Uh, so Purism, the company behind the uh, Librem uh, laptops and the well, amazing Librem phone, uh, the infamous infamous Librem, fifth, uh, Librem mm -hmm. 5. Basically, they they are now reselling a... Uh, they are reselling, a, a, is it AT&T and or T-Mobile deal in the United States where you get, uh, I think, all the data or something like that. But it's $99 a month. And what they are saying now, this is obviously not from my head. As a good podcaster, I listen to another podcaster. So I'm basically... This is, this is uh, Michael... Tonell on who was on this show once upon a time and who does uh, this week in Linux had a quite a good breakdown on it in the last one and I actually tried to do my own poll among the people I know who live in the states and uh, the question was if somebody offers you a deal for ninety nine dollars uh, and gives you this uh, free data and everything is it expensive as I living in Ireland think it bloody well is because for ninety nine dollars in here. Well, 99, whatever, you know, that kind of money you get flagship phone and uh, a really decent deal. You have to, obviously, you would have to sign up for two months. But if you wanted to go, t if you wanted to have and pay as you go $99 or euros or whatever, ever, you wouldn't be able to get that. Like, it's too much money. You'd have to buy two. So without a phone, like. Yeah, you you'd have literally have to buy two plans in order to get ninety nine a month. <laughs> here. And that's what's happening here, apparently. So according to Michael Tunnell, the plans that they are reselling are half the price. So T Mobile is selling. Obviously, T Mobile are undercutting the people they are selling it to as well. So it's not as you know as clear cut. But apparently, you can get it from T Mobile or from AT and T. I think was the other carrier for half the price than what uh, Purism are selling it. 
purism are saying that the way they do it is more private because they they are the owners. They even though they give you the sim and you pay them the money for it, they they still stay the owners of the sim. So whatever ID identification collection is going on, whatever data is exchanging hands, it's their name on it, not yours. It has got drawbacks because you can't change the number on this, for example, for the same reason because you don't own the number. But uh, I think it's just another. I have to be careful here because you know they they we do want open source services and we don't want open source phones. But this is a a lot of money for what it is, and that ties in with their phones, which are also a lot of money for what it is, which is what we at length discuss in this very show. And uh, I understand it with the laptops because you get a good laptop for a, a lot of money. They are not cheap. As far as I know, I've seen one in life and uh, the specs were nice. It was a bit overpriced if you compare it to your box standard Dell, for example, but it's not a Dell. It's a small company that makes a privacy conscious gear. But the phones are not that great. And the deal you're getting from the, uh, from the, pure, from the awesome, as they call it, to me, that's not great either. So, uh, no, I don't think I don't think I like it. In my opinion, they're kind of I don't know if they're doing this deliberately, but they're saying, um, "Yeah, it's a it's a premium, but we're worth the premium." And I don't think it's just for privacy reasons, even though that's the main reason that they're marketing that people should switch over. I think they they're there might be a small degree of arrogance in it as well of of listen it's private but also it's the name you trust and we're worth a premium so they might be adding on a bit more than just listen this shit costs extra money whatever privacy stuff that we put in um I struggle, to be honest, any time that they come up with a price point, I struggle to justify it. I mean, sure, they, they, all of the above, they're, they, they're small manufacturer, they can't have the economies of scale, they, they, um, so their, their, their cost price is inherently going to be larger. Um, but then even factoring that in and also factoring in a reasonable profit margin for them. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I would do um, specific calculations. I'm just ballparking in my head what uh, a, a phone of this caliber or a laptop of this caliber or a SIM pa- plan of this caliber should cost. I mean, if even if they, they took their basic, the basic 50 dollars a month or 60 dollars a month that they're getting from um t-mobile or at&t and saying because we're doing extra shit uh and ours is more private we're charging an extra ten dollars a month on top of the of the plan that you so you could go with at&t for fifty dollars a month but uh, our plan which is effectively just a reselling of their plan, but with our own custom privacy stuff, is sixty dollars a month. That I could see is, is justified. Maybe even sixty five a month, but going from fifty or sixty to a hundred dollars a month, I just fail to see the the justification. To be perfectly frank, yeah, I mean, I I have heard that uh, cell plans or mobile plans, as we call them, um, are surprisingly expensive in the US and our US listeners are free to correct us on this I'm hearing this second hand obviously um, but $100 does seem like a lot um, and yeah I just don't see the benefit I mean I'm, I was reading through their blurb on, on their blog and stuff and I, I wasn't seeing the USP of it really it's just like here have a mobile plan that we resell I, I, I don't I don't get it really. Maybe I'm not the well. I'm definitely not the intended uh, customer here because I don't spend that much money on shit, and I'm not that hell, like. Hell, mine costs me a tenner a month, nine ninety nine a month, and I get unlimited data. Well, f- with fair use, it's eighty gigs per month, but eighty gigs per month is it's effectively unlimited if you're yeah, on that, a mobile phone. That's the kind of you know. Even I looked it up at for someone else today. Like even if you just go bank, first thing that you find online in the inter- on the internet in Ireland, how much does a full load of data cost you every month? 
20 euros, right? So let's say, I don't know, what is it, a million dollars? I don't know, uh, $25, maybe something like that, right? Including taxes. This is because in the United States, because of the way their states uh, and federal taxes work, they given they give you a browse price, as far as I know, that actually doesn't uh, doesn't contain taxes so this is 99 dollars plus taxes on top i don't know what it means probably depend depends where you live in here if i say 20 euros that's 20 euros right and uh, uh that's just incomparable to me now uh like yeah of course if you want to support purism you could find worse ways of doing it uh I always find their marketing or whatever PR or posts or social stuff. I find it a bit disingenuous. Like, yeah, what are you not telling me? What are you doing this? Is this because you just really need the cash or is it really you think that your service is that much value to somebody? Is this what you think yeah. it's really worth? But then, you know, again, not an intended customer here. So, um, I I'd imagine some people, some somebody must be keeping them. Somebody must be buying their stuff because they are still going. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I I don't mean to constantly crap on one company so much. I really don't. Like, it's not mean. It's not specific. I'm not targeting them for any reason other than their actions. The the blurb I'm reading here, blurb blog, whatever you want to call it, about this idea is not convincing me that it's a good idea it's convincing me that they've partnered with someone who sells like uh mobile plants and that's really all there is to it there i don't see how this advances privacy i don't see that how this advances open software i don't understand how it helps i get the privacy bit right they take your data they put it in the pool of everybody every other of their customers and because there's a lot of tracking going on in mobile services when the data gets tracked, it gets tracked to them, to purism, not to you. So it's a mm. bit like uh, getting mixed, getting all your internet traffic mixed into other people's internet traffic under one umbrella, right? So theoretically, mm. I don't know. Again, I'm not a security expert either. So uh, uh, maybe there's a way to put in, put a big hole in it. But I don't know. Um <laughs> Can we move on? This is depressing me. Yeah, this is a good time for me to interject. Might I interject? Um, so uh, if you're enjoying the podcast uh, and you want to talk to us in real life or through text, which is kind of real life these days, let's face it, you can find us uh, all our contact at linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Um, you can get us linuxlads.com forward slash telegram. Um, that will bring you straight to our telegram group you can email us on show at linuxlads.com you can even donate linuxlads.com forward slash donate and we also have a merch store which i can't remember the url for but connor you might be able to fill me in uh, it's linuxlads.com slash store Ooh. yeah so go there buy a t-shirt buy a mug buy a hoodie buy i don't know what else they have they probably have everything it's a teespring <laughs> store um so you whatever you want with our logo on it you can have it we don't so, mind so so far we have all of those things we have t-shirts um, mugs and hoodies and i think people mm. have bought uh so far since we announced it last um episode people have bought um hoodies and mugs i think i don't think anyone's yeah, bought a t-shirt yet surprisingly so. popular like we're very humbled by anyone buying anything with our logo on it. Like, so that's like whoever has bought stuff so far, we very much thank you because. And especially since Shane, since Shane designed the logo. So kudos to Shane. I wasn't going to say that, but thanks. Oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a group effort. So, um, but yeah, I, yeah. So that's great that people are engaging with the podcast. We really enjoy that engage in any way you like you don't have to pay us money you don't have to buy our stuff you can just send us a message and say hello that's all we want um so anyway moving on with the podcast that i was just talking about i was um, I, I was i was for a minute when you said might i interject i actually for some reason i don't know if i'm too tired or I, I actually thought you'd be saying this this episode is brought to you by skillshare or something <laughs> to that you know, I, to be clear, it's it's not it's not, uh, it's brought, not to, brought to you by, to you by Skillshare. Skillshare. 
Yeah. I mean, they do have the best. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. But imagine, uh, for some reason, I'm, I thought the, you were going to The myriad of, of VPN elite. companies. Yeah, yeah. NordVPN. Uh, or or uh, Azire VPN. Hey, actually, hey, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we do have the coupon, and I think it's Yeah, still we works. do have the coupon. We're not sponsored by them, but they, yeah. they're kind enough to pass on us uh, a coupon code. Yeah. Linux last 20, I believe. Yeah, something like that. It's like COVID-19, Linux, Linux last 20. <laughs> I think <laughs> bad comparison, but yeah, that code still works. And actually, we haven't pitched that for a while. So, if you want a, a nice <laughs> VPN provider, go to Azire VPN and use the use the coupon code Linux Lads Twenty. Boom. Haven't done that for a while. <laughs> I use it all the time, and I haven't gotten busted yet, so it must work. <laughs> uh, there, uh, one of the first that I was aware of that supported pretty much absolutely everything on their website had like guide for adding it to arch a guide for adding it to ubuntu and from the very beginning had wireguard support even w- now the big ones are starting to say oh we also support wireguard beta with bracket better in the back in the brackets because i think my personal one at the moment is just because i think i paid for like a year or two years so i might as well use it is private internet access and i think they've only just started introducing wireguard support so kudos to azire vpn for having wireguard straight off the bat i never actually knew why why wireguard was so good until I was listening to Late Night Linux recently and Phelan talked about WireGuard and why it is good. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't understand about 60% of what he said, but it was still, I still finally was like, yes, okay, now I get what WireGuard is and why it's desirable. He, d- he finally. said like, he said like, yeah, it was so, it was so easy to set up that I thought I did it wrong and it did, and, and it was not working or something like that right yeah. exactly yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much yeah yeah it's uh it's definitely wireguard is easy it's like you download the config and you run the command or whatever i don't know if there is a gui maybe there is a gui you know um but yeah although to be honest like for uh, for work we have to rally we have to we have to use fortinet uh, vpn which is a big like enterprise thing I think anyway, I never heard of them, but I assume it's a big enterprise thing. And I used to have to download this Linux version of the of their GUI client, which was like, well, it was probably made uh, the other side of two thousand. And um, then I now I reinstalled I installed Fedora right with the newest GNOME, and I realized that you can just download a Fortinet package for uh, for uh, what you call it for like for GNOME or a Plasma a Network Manager. And it's right there in the network, uh, in the pop-up, in the menu where you've got your network. You can also turn your VPN on. So yeah, that and it looks really, it's really slick. So yeah, just. Mm. I mean, I just said that for nothing, but um, you can cut it out if it's if you think it doesn't have any value, which probably doesn't. I mean, <laughs> who uses Fortinet anyway? But I assume there's stuff like this for other networks as well, for other VPNs. So on to our discussion. Um... This week, we're talking about a topic that we probably just discussed tangentially before. Uh, but basically, what we're talking about is the empowering and uh, empowering side of Linux. I can't actually think of the other word that we used because... Uh, barriers of Ease entry. of use. Oh, barriers of entry. Barriers of entry. That's the one. Sorry, our server went down. So, yeah, we can't see the notes that we wrote. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um Basically, yeah, in a nutshell, what we're talking about is how hard is it to get into computers and Linux and all of these things? And like, what do we see as the biggest barriers to entry for Linux? And how do we empower users to use Linux more? And by extension, computers, Mike? I would say, do we, I mean, my question is, do we need to empower everybody? Um, Like, so... There's been a couple of news recently that basically shows that people are either using things like Excel to build massive chunks of computer infrastructure. Like, for example, I think it was Excel that almost lost uh, data for a lot of data for COVID in the UK because they went over the million or whatever limit of uh, rows and they didn't realize it. And Excel just won't warn you. It's not that kind of tool. It's not. This is not a diss on Excel or any spreadsheet at all. This is basically people using it wrong. 
but they are empowered to do so. Or um, uh, I have experience with some terrible tool that was made probably by a HR accountant or accountant lawyer or a lawyer HR or something like this. Basically, maybe a very nice person who should have no business making websites, yet there is a tool called Sencha that uh, enables you to make websites without writing a bit of code and the result is just just awful, just dreadful. It should never exist. So basically what I'm saying, maybe things should be difficult to learn and you should learn it and then do them and have fun in the process of learning. That's the thing. If something is easy and you do it because, yeah, whatever, you want to achieve something else and maybe doing it, doing the thing that you want to do is not your primary objective, then, yeah, that, that works fine if you kind of let's say run your own business and you are the only person doing everything in the business but it's not a scalable uh scalable strategy for a big company or a big project or a government organization so maybe like we should get used to uh paying people who enjoy doing stuff rather than budging some kind of thing with excel and cello tape uh together because it seems cheaper at the time that's the thing. That's the thing. This this is like I have a bit of bajillion opinions on this because it depends on what you're talking about. Context is everything with this topic. So if we're talking about Linux, barriers to entry, empowerment, barriers to entry are are high in my opinion. Um because of the discoverability of it. Um it's it's still kind of niche like the person that you you run up and interrogate the average person on the street they're going to be like i don't know what the fuck linux is um so there's that but once you get past that that kind of bump the the empowerment is immense um if you can get someone to install linux and know how linux any linux distro works you have already like that's half the battle that's that's that that's a huge leap right there so it's all relative all this stuff and it really depends on the user and the use case and all that good stuff so yeah to relate it to what you're saying i mean yeah some people do have the tool that they use in their job and that's all they know and they don't really see it as the tool in comparison to anything else that's just the thing that they use and they have been shown how to use and that's really it and there's nothing wrong with that but for me where empowerment comes into it is when you show people no there's not just this there's this other thing as well that you can use and it's free and it's quite, actually quite easy to use and in some cases it might be easier or more efficient or better in some way and i think that's where it where Linux comes in and open source comes in is that a lot of people don't even know that this stuff is out there. And that's, that's what I'm all about. So I, I could talk for days. Um, for me, um, uh, I, sp- I can only sp- speak, I suppose, anecdotally. So I can, I tend to relate things back to my own experiences or things that I've read about. So, what empowered me through learning about Linux was the control. Um, it's empowered, like, it's, it's, it's been cliched so many freaking times because of the, a certain, um, guy who, who, uh, who's been known to be very opinionated about these kind of things, but, um, is, all about control and the user should be in control but in that aspect i do i would echo those points but not 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 necessarily for the same reasons i mean you're installing something on your computer and you have control over you can if if there's updates for the operating system they can hand they can go on in the background or they can prompt you would you like to install these now yeah that's no problem you're you're watching YouTube, you're doing, listening to Spotify, whatever you're doing on your operating system. And then you'll get a notification saying, oh, it's recommended that you do an update. Uh, And then you dismiss that and you can leave your computer on for hours, days, weeks, and that will never force you to reboot your computer. And then once, once you happen to reboot your computer, then 
those updates will will happen or log out and log back in again or whatever needs to happen in order for those updates to take place. But with certain other operating systems, namely Windows, now they uh, they have gotten better at it, but they're still really, really bad where they will interrupt you. They'll interrupt the tasks that you're doing. Be it to say, oh, uh, you might be busy right now, but we need an answer from you. Um, please schedule when we can do updates. Um, be it in an hour or please pick a time when you think you're not going to be busy. Like it's now 3 p.m. Maybe uh, 5.30 p.m. Your, uh, will be downtime and we can do updates then. But it's kind of nagging, nagging, nagging. Mm. These things need to happen. Please, or uh, like this has to happen and it's quite annoying it's 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 certainly t- seems to it's at the base level of it it's taking control away from the user because mm. the um it's demanding the user's attention um and in the other aspect of control is choose the interface that you prefer to interact with your computer with and that may change over time if you like a windows like user interface you can pick that on on linux like a mac os like user interface you can pick that on linux want something that's more keyboard centric if that is what you become you have become used to you can pick that on linux the control is in your hands it's all a learning experience mm. it's all fun because you can experiment you can say oh i've heard about this keyboard centric user interface i might like it and then decide nah it's not for me i'm going to go back to my mac os style or whatever you want i mean there's a reason why distro hopping is addictive is because somebody's coming out with something new and snazzy and you're like oh that looks interesting i might want to try that and then you try it and you'll decide if it's whether it's for you or not i mean a classic example of that is I'm running Cinnamon, which is a user interface that I've used countless times before. I'm familiar with it, but I'm not using it on Linux Mint, which is probably the uh, the distro that promotes it the most, or, or certainly the distro that puts the most development time into it. I'm running it on Manjaro because that is uh, <laughs> I found that Manjaro is is because a distro I that I that I like, <laughs> but I'm using Cinnamon on it. I mean, Manjaro actually comes with KDE by default, but Cinnamon is one of their community supported spins. So I'm like, hmm, okay, I'm going to take a base, which is Manjaro. I'm going to put, uh, I see there's a community spin of Cinnamon. Oh, I've used Cinnamon in the past. I quite enjoy it. So I'm going to give that a go. And it's a very good balance for me. Um, I've also tried KDE on Manjaro. I've tried uh, Gnome on Manjaro. I've tried uh, Mate XFCE on Manjaro. So I can pick the base that I like and then experiment with the user interface on top of it. Mm. Or uh, conversely, I could say, okay, I like Cinnamon, but not really feeling Manjaro anymore. Then I could go over to Linux Mint, which is well, actually, else. I think you said that their primary interface was KDE. I think it's XFCE. XFCE in oh. the, well, actually... But anyway, oh, uh, I, uh, yeah, I know that fact. If I said KDE by mistake, then I do apologize. I did. Anyway, uh, I think that uh, XFC. Uh, I think that that my like you said that it was fun and ad- addictive. Yeah, that's great. That's why we do this podcast. Like we might never be at the uh, what is the guy Joe Rogan level of making podcasts, but we are having fun trying it. And also, it's not. It's not rocket surgery, so nobody's going to die if we if we make it a hash of it, right? But uh, and we are empowered by Linux to do that, and uh, you know the state of uh, audio and uh, the fact that microphones are cheap, everything we are empowered to do this, and that's great. But uh, I wouldn't employ us for uh, you know to 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 work for uh, the BBC Radio Free or RTE or uh, or NPR, right? Uh, no matter how empowered we are, uh, because to me that's imagine that. So, so what I was what I was saying is right. Imagine that uh, we decided that we are empowered enough to, uh, like, make to to take over the national broadcaster and just do our own broadcasts. 
I think, or are you even starting our own like massive? Sorry, <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, or no, that would be horrifying because we, you know, it's it's uh, basically Rome pirate radio station. Yeah, no pirate radio would be fun, but I'm thinking like, uh, I still can't get over the fact that in the UK they like missed some thousands of COVID staff because they ran out of rows in Excel spreadsheet. Like, who does that? I work with spreadsheets all day and. No, if you if you get to this stage, just pay somebody to make you a database, an application, somebody who's not only empowered, but also knows what they are doing. And that's the thing. You mentioned there, Connor, that it was a learning experience and it was fun and you, you were, you know, and that's the important thing to me. You are either learning something or you are learning something and also good at something as well. And then you can, in my opinion, and yeah, of course, this is probably gate, gatekeeping on my side, but... Should we really? Should people really uh, try to use tools that empower them and make things that are inherently pretty shit? Like, yeah, people can do whatever, but we don't let that happen when it, when lives are at stake. You wouldn't let somebody who thinks that he's a good surgeon to do heart surgery um, without them being able to prove that they are actually a good surgeon. Uh, maybe. We should put, and that's because there's a high value on human life, right? Maybe we should put high high value on uh, at least some uh, IT work as well. Like, yeah, of course we do that for infrastructure where where lives again are at stake. Like, probably your power company runs some software that's been a million times over certified and stuff like that. But maybe Debian. there sh- there should be like uh, limits on what people are allowed to do with Excel, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy and linux is great because it empowers you to learn all the stuff as long as you are like actually actually using it for for mm-hmm. learning i mean you know not not just uh thinking okay um i i i had this linux i had there is a this linux thing and i have an iso and i have a server I'm just gonna put the I'm just gonna put the ISO on the server and start reselling uh, services. Says the guy who just uh, somehow managed to lose a whole next uh, next cloud installation. But then again, <laughs> we are doing this for fun. I wouldn't think myself good enough to go and be a uh, be an IT uh, what do you call them sysadmin for a big company. So what I'm trying to get to is empowered to learn, not think you're empowered mm. and do. That's that's the thing though you you would be surprised uh by what what linux and open source can teach you um so i have i have seen situations before where i have known things that were way beyond my quote unquote pay grade um in other jobs like support jobs and stuff and people were like how do you know that shit and (laughs) i i would say because i i don't know i'm interested in computers in my spare time and I experiment with things like a thing called Linux, et cetera, et cetera. I experiment with X, Y, Z. And they'd be like, wow, I'd never even think of doing that ever. And it's surprising the advantage it gives you. I mean, I'm not speaking purely professionally because that makes me feel a bit dirty. But um, I'm all about the doing what you want to do, not chasing money, because that's just not how my brain works. But... um. Yeah, it's just amazing what it can teach you when you do get into it, when you get past those little obstacles and those little hurdles and stuff. Like, it's 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 quite fascinating. Um, so, yeah, it's always a learning experience, no matter what skill level, no matter what entry point, etc. I mean, uh, just you speaking about things that you can get pick up a reputation, and I don't know how, but um, apparently I had this reputation... Uh, I have this reputation in work is a bit of a Linux guy and you can imagine there's there's level three guys there's there's uh, like server admins there's all sorts of this guy I mean, how, how am I being picking up this reputation but anyway um, I got a, uh, an email from um, one of my crowd workers over the weekend um, and he texted me to say, to, to say oh, I've just sent you an email and he was having an issue with his, um, uh, so with, uh, like a couple of questions on his uh, on his course that he's doing, 
And he said, oh, uh, I hear you know a bit about Linux. Would you be able to help me out? And I said, sure, I'll have a look at it. And it's all, it was all about bash scripting and regular expressions and stuff like <laughs> this. And I was just going, dude, this is way above my head. <laughs> I felt like saying, <laughs> but like, I was like, well, why, why do I suddenly have this reputation for being a Linux nerd <laughs> in work? I think people don't realize that uh, you can perfectly well just use Linux and not not having to learn by scripting. I mean, I actually am interested in programming and I can't do by scripting because it's just that language is foreign to me. Uh, but like, that's another thing. You can, Linux empowers you, some Linux, not all Linux, like Arch, for example, doesn't, but some Linux empowers you to just have a working computer and a relatively safe one. And depending which distro you choose, uh, one that is, you know, hard to break, doesn't update, doesn't force you, as you said, it doesn't force you to do things that you don't want to do and doesn't spy on you, right? And that's that's great. That's that's the kind of empowerment where people know what they want and uh, they choose the tool to do that. And if they choose wisely, the tool will not like... Um, I don't know. I'm I'm running out of bloody metaphor. I'm too tired. Basically, <laughs> if they choose good, they choose Linux. They choose decent Linux. Something that will not get into their in their way, and they will just you know uh, have a really good time, even without it. But even without them being big tech people, like that's the thing. You should kind of know what you want, to, what what you want to achieve, and not have to, uh, and then choose the right tool for the job, which is always Linux and Vim, obviously. And that, that that was that was nearly what was um, in the Indiana Jones and the Glass Crusade reference there. You've you've chosen wisely. <laughs> I I don't remember. I've seen the movie, but I didn't uh, twice. I think. Mm. Wow. Is yeah. that the last one? Like where he's really old and Shia LaBeouf is chasing him. Like no, no, skull? that's his crystal skull. That ah, is okay. probably one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I no, hate okay. it so much. I think oh, which the one I'm referring to is the one with um where uh, Sean Connery plays his dad, Julia. Oh, oh that yeah, was that okay. That's funny. That one's funny. Um, the no, everything before Crystal Skull was pretty much amazing. So yeah. all of the three movies. <laughs> <laughs> so that about wraps up the uh, discussion. Um, thank you for joining us for another chaotic, exciting, dynamic episode of Linux Lads. Um. I already gave you the socials. There's links in the show notes. Uh, you'll be able to see those. Um, we're on Mastodon. We're on Telegram. We're on Twitter. We are on email. We're on email. Uh, <laughs> um, we're on that newfangled thing that kids are referring to called email. Yeah. We also have a merch store, which we would act- actually love it if you visited and looked at all our fine wares. We would like that very much. Um I think I mentioned it already, uh, but we're very fine, proud of it. Fine wares that you can wear. Fine wares. Yeah, fine wares that were not made by us at all. Um, but yeah, our new logo was cool, I think. so. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. But I'm not biased at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I think you would really like it on a t-shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something like that. I think you'd love that. Um, buy it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, thanks for joining us again um, for another chaotic week of madness and stuff like that. Uh, I've been Shane. I've been Connor. And I've been Mike. And we are the Linux Lads. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.